Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just still familiar, familiarizing myself with the panel here. That's a huge panel we have here. I think all the experts are right up here. <laughs> um, I think in the interest of time, I'll just keep it uh, very short. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, diverse uh, aspects that... Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. There are a lot of diverse aspects that we can talk. I mean, it's, it's a whole... Uh, range of issues that we can take up and converse but uh, I think uh, in the interest of the time there are uh, probably two or three things that we can take up one is uh, probably on uh, the recent developments uh, with regard to because there is uh, there are OEMs and uh, yeah, you know uh, we're talking about EPCs uh, here so in the recent developments with regard to uh, the customs duty uh, or the safeguard duty and the uh, uh, the budget announcements with regard to uh, you know uh, the manufacturing company uh, the grouping under the manufacturing company the 15 percent uh, tax uh, related uh, changes uh, maybe each of us can talk uh, uh, briefly about how they be believe that it is impacting the business uh, uh, the other uh, could be about uh, I think uh, we all uh, should agree that uh, it is time for some sort of disruption that has to happen. Disruption could be uh, technical disruption could be in business model disruption could be in the way uh, the contracts are executed disruption could be in the way regulatory and policy environment is uh, currently viewed. Uh, I believe that as, as uh, uh, EPCs and uh, OEMs and developers that are here and the uh, tec technical consultants over here I think each of us uh, would definitely be able to throw some light on uh, what is the need of the hour in terms of uh, disruptions. Uh, could be technical, could be uh, business models, could be uh, financial aspects of it, could be technical aspects of it. Maybe each of us could cover uh, one of those issues. Um, I'd like to, uh, there is no particular order um, uh, that I can choose at this moment. So I'll just pass the mic clockwise uh, and then we will come back to you. Thank you. Um, so we'll talk about both both aspects right away. Um, I think we'll um, talk about both the aspects. Okay, sure. Um, so this is Hari Narayan from U Solar. We are a rooftop, uh, primarily a rooftop player in based in Bangalore. Um, so we do a lot of uh, projects um, for uh, CNI customers and as well as for uh, people like Renew, where we execute uh, large scale rooftop and offsite power plants. Um, so, with regard to the uh, customs duty and the safeguard, it has created a lot of confusion. Um, I think this kicked in last year uh, in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, in August. Um, and I think for almost a period of two, three months, there was a lot of uncertainty about the whole thing. Um, and uh, a lot of projects got delayed. Um, the thing is, uh, the problem with the government is that they make these announcements all of a sudden and then a lot of projects which are in the pipeline or have closed they uh, it tends to uh, disrupt that um, and um, i think recently again they have come to come to announce the customs duty which will again kick in uh, the day they announced it they said it is going to be customs duty plus safeguard duty this was last week and again for four or five days there was a lot of confusion and i think now it's somewhat clear that the customs duty will kick in later. Um, it's not very clear any of these measures is helping any kind of make in India. Um, very little other than module capacity, very little cell capacity is operating and there are there don't seem to be any, any large players other than Adani who have set up uh, cell plants in India. Um, and I think it these things just uh, unnecessarily create confusion. Um, I would suggest a more robust manufacturing incentive policy, which they've been trying for a while, but have not really succeeded. Uh, hopefully, something will come out uh, in the near future. With respect to disruptive technologies, we see storage as uh, a huge disruption in the future. In fact, we just executed a uh, storage project uh, for a, a FMCG company where the entire warehouse is powered um, with solar plus storage. Uh, in this case, uh, they didn't have grid connectivity. So essentially, we replaced their entire 
DG, 24-hour DG operation with a solar plus storage. And this was done on a PPA model, which is they only pay for the power which we, which we generate and it is saving them a lot of money and it is viable today. So the good news is storage plus solar can replace DG um, and we hope uh, in the near future, maybe in the next couple of years, it will can also start replacing the grid in certain cases. So that is what I see in the near future. Thank you. Uh, I am Krishna Revankar from Balark Solar. Uh, we are uh, mainly uh, engineering consultants and uh, distribution we do uh, solar module, inverter and other things. So we also are the trainers for uh, large scale power plant uh, operation and maintenance engineers, designers and all. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, safeguard duty and the basic customs duty, what is being uh, talked about. Uh, first thing is that uh, to whom it is going to help, the safeguard duty. Uh, because uh, presently we are not manufacturing solar cells, enough required. We do not have wafer. So when you buy cells, you are paying uh, let's say at this point of time safeguard duty of 15 percent and the same thing is used for module manufacturing and if you are importing modules 15 percent finally what we are seeing is as Harinarayan said that lot of uh, delays in the project cost of project has increased some projects got stalled and some IPP and large scale power plants based on the cost of projects they would have quoted for the tariff and that, that cannot hold up. And uh, second thing is, I don't know really to whom it is going to help. It is definitely not going to help the industry unless a industry which comes of entire value chain. In the sense, we start with wafer, uh, crystal growing, solar cell manufacturing, then module manufacturing, if it is in this entire process if you go then only it's going to be benefited otherwise today's case it is not benefiting any uh, anybody except it is making it expensive for the uh, project developer and uh, simply the money is uh, being collected by the government and uh, I don't know whether it is going to be used for industry or not this is first thing second thing is that uh, um, uh, manufacturing, suppose you take uh, Karnataka itself, uh, uh, they have been trying to create a hub of uh, entire solar manufacturing, but there were some five, six hubs they were trying to develop, except solar, everything has moved forward and they have all come to a final stage of implementation, except solar, because solar uh, there is uh, so much of uh, confusion whether the place for this hub should be North Karnataka or South Karnataka, which where it has to be close to, is it close to the port or is it close to uh, all infrastructure available area, whether the manpower is available. All these confusions are there and the hub is not getting developed. Yeah, these two points I wanted to tell. Good afternoon everyone. So this is myself Bhuvanesh. I am representing Sangro India Private Limited. I am heading the southern uh, South India and Sri Lanka regions. So the first I would like to talk about the uncertainties which is due to safeguard duties and customs duties which is prevailing and as well as the BAS certifications which is particularly majorly for inverter part since it is hampering. So recently like a lot of extensions has been happening for um, uh, safeguard duties, custom duties as well as the BAS extensions. So we see BAS is hampering since India, we wanted to make make in India concept. Since we have a factory in India, but still there are uncertainty which is not making us to bring down the cost of the equipments. So which is hampering a lot, even though we are trying to make the inverters in India, but the cost is not able to become. So there are a lot of aspects just behind and uh, these are hampering majorly the market. And uh, the disruption which I wanted to, uh, for, for the future is, is as rightly said by um, the panelists. So it is majorly the storage. See, we are seeing huge potentials of storage 
which can replace the current scenario of generators and we, have, we can use solar as well as batteries to uh, to uh, it's for a lot of applications say voltage regulation frequency regulation and for microgrid applications which will really which is going to be a future so that is what the major focus on the storage which i wanted to address thank you <coughs> yeah good afternoon friends i am hidayatullah i am from tu rhineland it's a laboratory based out at bangalore for testing of the solar components including uh, pv modules pv inverters or take solar power water pumping system and all those things uh, regarding the anti dumping policies or the safeguard duty and all the other aspects what uh, dr revankar has just told now i take the thread from there um, what has happened is we being in the laboratory we see uh, what is the effect of it on to the quality of the product so what we are finding out is that uh, just let me take a case uh, now in order to boost the market from the indian cells the companies are struggling so what i can say they just we have the cases wherein they buy the cells only to make the samples and submit the samples here and they get the certificate with that cell i don't want to name anybody but uh, there are only a few cell manufacturers in india apart from the public sector like bhl bl and all those persons they have their own cells that they can produce apart from that on a commercial viability basis there is very less uh, sources available for the pv module manufacturers also not only module manufacturers in even to other aspect so what i mean to say it is going to uh, it will lead to some kind of mal practices in the industry so that is one aspect that industry is missing out we remember uh, when myself and revan karsar and all those persons we were working back in 90s we we had we didn't have any problems faced out in uh, in the fields whenever you will see the the longevity of the module was very high the quality of the power plants was assured and there were at least 5 to 10 years there was no problem at all on the power aspects now people are telling that uh, if there is some kind of irradiance change or something the yield is not there in the market all these things are due to some kind of forceful things that the manufacturers are need to do so with that i just uh, pass this much because of the time limitation to other colleagues here uh thank you everyone uh, i would first like to introduce myself i am shiv varma i am a vice president sales with premier energies limited premier energies uh, earlier we were known as premier solar systems <coughs> private limited now we are premier energies limited so we are basically a primarily we are manufacturers of uh, solar modules we have a 500 megawatt capacity we are based out of hyderabad yeah and uh, we are a 25 year old company we established in 1995 and uh, we have sustained uh, 25 years in the market uh right now so when it comes to uh the safeguard duty uh, which the fellow panelists were also talking about uh everyone knows that uh, we are at the rate of 15% at safeguard duty right now and uh, and the anti dumping duty and the basic customs duty is not in place yet uh futuristically yes there may be uh Uh, some duties which may kick in and which will definitely affect uh, the indian market as well uh, first uh, india as a country are we uh, independently open uh, to apply all these duties and still manage the growth uh, of the solar targets which we have that is a very big question so coming to that point uh, lot of uh, as of now there is a lot of market which has got affected as of last one week uh, a very huge impact of a virus corona virus has come in so our dependency to the international market especially china is is quite a lot that there is no denying that fact i am very sure everyone agrees to that as well so as as and when the duties also come in the cost of material would increase as well and uh, it could impact uh, india and india growth 
in this sector of solar specifically quite quite a lot so uh, is the government ready to uh, you know make solar uh, take a back seat because of this because if you are going to apply more duties the cost is going to increase and as of now we are at a pace in which the cost of all raw material everything is going down so that is one point uh, ravi i would like to uh, click on is uh, the virus and the interdependency of china so we are depending so much on uh, the foreign companies so is india ready for being an independent and self sustained uh, you know country to manage the entire show so that is the uh, one point i would like to touch on and uh, i'll pass on the mic uh, to my colleague so that he can put some view on that as well good evening thank you shiv uh, since we have all been uh, discussing on the safeguard duty and all this i just wanted to put up my points on the uh, my view from the epc perspective and as a general public so what i feel was that we need to in india we need to develop an ecosystem though the policy has come in since 2011 it's been a decade but still we are not at on the higher end on the manufacturing side so we as an industry and as a government we should form come to a single point that we need to develop an ecosystem and associate with the institutions research institutions so we become the oem so we don't need to depend on the multinational companies because see there have been companies like inverters and all these companies developed in the last decade so if we have started earlier we could have been also be there so for that government should push the industries and they also need to take the initiative to associate with the universities research institutions and develop and support the company to grow at least for a decade or some time so that will be a long term and another thing we need to as a companies or oems or the developers or epc players we need to quickly adopt to the soft technologies like analytics big data analytics or the machine learning data mining so how we that can help in improving the performance that will be a minor maybe 1% or 2% may contribute to the plant <coughs> performance but that needs to be embraced because that is the future we need to upskill our team we need to get into more uh, research on those things uh, acquire those skills so that should be uh, this thing and in with respect to regulatory point of view even this blockchain i recently read an article in up they were coming up with the blockchain based payments so which allows my uh, rooftop power uh, produced to i can sell it to my neighbor or somebody in, in the same uh, regulatory geography i can sell it anywhere so we need to adopt all those technologies and more and more we become the technologically adopted more we can sustain the uh, threats or the uh, we can face, we are facing it so that is one of the my point i would like to put it upon apart from all these things thank you